friends and colleagues watch this minimally edited video of about 12 minutes duration this is a hard hyper mature cataract the patient is a elderly lady of 78 years by this time all the incisions have been made and now the anterior capsule of this cataractus lens is being stained with tripan blue dye underneath a big air bubble The dye is now washed out and please watch that the people is tending to become small at this moment. From the very beginning I am afraid that the people will become small during surgery so I have kept a people expansion device ready for application during this surgery. Now, capsulorexis is being done. At this moment, I am very careful to watch if the jonule is weak or not. It is not. The jonule is okay. Since this is a hard cataract, I want to do an adequate sized large rexis. So I'm going almost along the border of the paper to get a rexis of about 6 millimeter duration, 6 millimeter size. And now, hydro dissection. Hydro dissection is done at multiple points. The nucleus is balloted gently and then we can see that the nucleus is free. It rotated very nicely. Viscoelastic substance is again injected. This is HPMC and then the tip of the FACO handpiece is introduced. I mean FACO on mode and in bevel down posture of the FACO handpiece, I am sculpting the anterior pool of the cataract and going deep. It means I am making a crater and this is called crater and chop technique. It was described long back by Professor Gimbel of Calgary, Canada. And you can see at this moment that the people is very small. So, I am applying a bit of adrenaline to see if the people dilates, but it didn't dilate much. So, at this moment, I have planned you apply the people expansion device since the cataract is hard and the people is tending to become small I dared not take more risk so here goes the BHEX BHEX people expansion device very thin device doesn't need any Injector system just need these forceps for easy application. This is a this is known as BHEX forceps. It's a crocodile forceps 23 gauge. Alternate flanges with manipulation holes are tucked under the iris. And after you apply the device, the people takes this kind of hexagonal shape. Now again, I go in, do some more sculpting. Then I go to FACO 2 mode. And still I'm in FACO 1 mode. Now I'm in FACO 2 mode and now I have started 
chopping the nucleus and it has partially cracked so what I do is I rotate it 180 degree sculpt along a uh, hold on piece the inferior piece and pull the superior piece with the chopper and the nucleus divides completely into two heminuclei but here this heminucleus is not getting divided into pieces there is a leathery band of fiber which is joining these pieces so what I am doing is I am lifting the inner edge of this and applying power here where the leathery band, or band was and the pieces get separated and I emulsify the pieces. Let me describe the FACO on mode and FACO 2 mode. FACO on mode is low vacuum, low flow rate, high power in such cases. In this case FACO power I used was 80 percent, flow rate was 25 vacuum was 70 millimeter of mercury in FACO 1 mode and now I'm in FACO 2 mode at this time the power is 75 percent flow rate is 40 ml per minute vacuum is 400 millimeter of mercury in this case here this is the leathery band joining these two fragments you just I can just cut that band with ultrasonic power or we can start emulsifying the portion which is in front of the tip. That's it. We are almost through and this is the last portion of the nucleus. The nucleus management part has not been edited. It is you are seeing the total portion of the nucleus management part in this video. In all of my videos, I keep the nucleus management part intact. I don't edit that part usually. So here this is the last bit and now these small bits come out through the side port and then I remove the FACO handpiece. You can see that the B hex a portion of the flange which is above the iris which was at around 3 o'clock has gone behind the iris and the people has taken almost a pentagonal shape it doesn't matter we can st uh, still having quite large people and we can complete the surgery very comfortably we need not bring the portion of the flange which has gone behind the iris we do not bring it above the iris. Viscoelastic substance is injected. Then a foldable intraocular lens is implanted in the capsular bag. This is a hydrophilic acrylic intraocular lens. You can implant any lens once you have this device you can even implant toric lens this is how you remove the b hex hold this device yes bring it above the iris and just pull it out 
and see the size of the people. If I had tried without using this people expansion device, I was afraid I could have done some complication. The viscoelastic substance is nicely cleaned. Go behind the eye wheel and remove the visco from the caps from the capsular bag. Inject some air, hydrate the side ports. This is a bit of moxifloxacin. The air has been injected because the anterior chamber was becoming very shallow. To keep the anterior chamber formed, I injected this air. And this air will be removed during the final lavage of the anterior chamber. And this is the final lavage of the anterior chamber. The antechamber is formed nicely. Here it is. This is how you form the antechamber and come out. Check the integrity of the wounds. There should not be any leakage from any side. Friends, thank you very much for watching. Hope this video will inspire you to do tough cases using proper tools. Thank you very much.